Welcome to the Electronics Basics series. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications. I'm doing a video every day, so make sure you come back again tomorrow. So today's video, we're going to look at LEDs. Pretty basic subject, really, but I might explain a bit about it. So there's lots of different LEDs. We've got service mount ones like we've got here. We've got some 0402s, 0603s, the so-called other resistors, all the service mount stuff these days comes in these standard sizes, right? 1206, 1210s, 2835, 5330, and 5050. Lots of different sizes. Lots of choices there for service mount LEDs. You also got different types. You get the single color LEDs, which are simple to use. You got multi-color LEDs, which may have multiple inputs, one for each color. Or you've also got addressable LEDs, which are controlled by a microcontroller, and you actually send code to LEDs, and it will set up in like a string, and you can then just address each LED individually in the entire string. So you can create patterns and all sorts of stuff, and it's all RGB as well, but you know, we won't go to there in this part, but we'll look at the basic LEDs. Here you guys, a nice red one there. They're actually surprisingly simple devices. Oh, should I tell you more about how they're actually constructed? Maybe I should. The construction is usually done this way at least. I'll get closer. So LEDs will usually have a flat side, which you can see here. That's the donate orientation if the leads have been cut. Now standard leads, one is longer than the other. Right? The longer one is the anode, the shorter one is the cathode, right? And the flat is on the cathode side. So what that means is that's the positive side, you put positive onto here, negative onto there, and that will then light the LED up. LEDs have different voltages. Depending on the colour of the LED, the voltage to drive the LED will be different. So red is typically about 2 volts or so. If you have the data sheet for that specific brand of LED, I suggest you look at that. Currents are usually sort of 20 milliamps is quite common drive voltage. Sometimes they're 30 milliamps or more. Depending on the LED, sometimes like high brightness ones could be you know 50 milliamps or more. Right. There is actually a way of working out what resistor you need to drive things. So if you've got like a 5 volt supply rail and you want to drive one of these red LEDs from microcontroller which is outputting 5 volts, you can't just put that straight under the 5 volt pin because what will happen is it will draw excessive current for the microcontroller, potentially blow the microcontroller output pin and overdrive your LED and potentially blow the LED because you'll be limited by what the microcontroller's pin can put out. And that could be 50 milliamps and that will probably damage the LED pretty quickly, it will burn it out. In those cases you want to put a serial resistor in place, right? so usually you would have to put a serial resistor with an LED, it's quite common to need to do that. There's different ways of calculating what resistor value you need. There are online calculators, I'll put a link down below for a calculator from DigiKey which is a nice one, you put in the supply voltage or whatever provided this voltage is going to be, what the forward voltage is of the LED and the driving current you want to use. Now I actually recommend with LEDs, don't drive them at the full current, I actually back it down quite a bit so sort of as much as you can, 25%, 50%. The brightness doesn't suffer that much by dropping the, the drive voltage down. It does obviously affect it. In most cases, you don't need the full brightness. And by dropping that current down, what you actually do is you greatly extend the life of the LED. So the less drive current you give it, the longer the LED will last before it will fail. That's why a lot of these new modern LED bulbs, which are supposed to last longer, don't because they're being overdriven to get maximum brightness. And so they might only last six months to a year in some cases. I've had bulbs blown a week because they're just rubbish. But that's what they do. They say, oh no, longer life LEDs because LEDs don't have a filament to blow. Well, yeah, but they still have a design life cycle. Anyway, won't go into that bit. Here's some other LEDs. This seven segment display is also a dual display. Individual pins for each segment of the display, and you've got one or two common pins, usually the middle ones here and here, which are the common pins. In this case, this is a common anode, so the positive side, so the positive goes to the common, and then each individual pin is then driven with a negative voltage, just like a normal LED, 2 volts or so, right? No different there. Let's say, for example, you wanted to drive this LED here with a microcontroller output, and you want to know what resistor size to use. Well, this is 2 volts, right? Red's typically 2 volts. And let's say we want to drive it at 20 milliamps, which is the recommended maximum. Now, most microcontrollers can manage 20 milliamps on output pin, so you know it's okay. I would say also back that down a bit, especially if you're driving a lot of LEDs. The way to calculate the actual resistor you need is quite simple. So you've got a 5 volt supply from the microcontroller, it's say, it could be 3.3 volts even, but 5 volts in this case is what I'm giving you. And you've got a 2 volt LED with a 20 milliamp current. So with those three bits of information, you can actually calculate what resistor you need. So the DigiKey calculator asks for those three things, and you can tell you what you need. But there's also another way of working this out, which is really easy. You use Ohm's Law. I'm going to do a video on Ohm's Law, so make sure you subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and you can learn a little bit about that. So basically, 
we've got a five volt supply, we've got a two volt LED. Do that, that's two from each other, right? So it needs, you've got a three volt drop across the resistor. It's only three volts. Now, you want to drive that at 20 milliamps. So what you do is divide that by 20 milliamps. That's just, Ohm's law is based on ohms, volts, amps, four units. So 20 milliamps is a partial unit, right? So you want 0 0.02 is 20 milliamps. That will give us 150 ohm resistor to get 20 milliamps from a 5 volt supply. Okay, but I'm going to cover Ohm's law in more detail later on. And if you wanted, with that basic knowledge of 20 milliamps is 150 ohms, okay, if you want to go down to 10 milliamps instead, because you don't need the full brightness, double the resistance. 300 ohms. There you go. Easy. So if you're using LEDs in the projects, you probably notice in the back here I've got these little holders and these metal mounts. Um, we've got different sizes. These are for smaller LEDs. Um, this is a bigger one. This is the 5 mil LED. That was clip in. So what you do is drill a hole in your project case, which this fits into, and then you just push the LED in, it locks it in, clips in. Really easy to use if you need to do that. So I've got my Fluke 175 out here. I'm just going to show you testing an LED. I'm in diode mode with this. So we've got the anode and cathode. So we want to put them in the correct orientation. So you want the cathode to be negative, anode positive, and that will light the LED up. If you've got enough drive voltage and drive current, it will light the LED up. So you can just see it maybe coming on. My lighting drowns out a little bit. But you see it's coming on, and there's a forward drop there, 1.8 volts at this current. I'm not quite sure what the output current is of this, actually, I don't remember what it was. Um, let's get a different LED. Uh, yeah, there's a white one. We'll try this white LED. I think this is a high brightness one, so I'm not even sure how this thing is going to work. It might not work, it might need some high voltage. Oh, it still goes, there we go. High brightness LED, and it's not even showing up because the voltage is too high. I just can't see it. But obviously, it's working. And there's a green LED. Yeah, that's loading up. That's also about 1.8 volts drop. So if I reverse these leads, then you'd get open circuit, just like a normal diode. All right, it wouldn't show anything. And I'll show you one of those LED modules. So I'll stick the probe on here. I'm not sure which pin it is exactly, but it's going to be that one, I think. Yep, there we go. See, I'm just going around each segment in the top half. It's split, split into halves. So that's that side. I'll come to the bottom ones. It'll do the bottom segments. Now you might be thinking, okay, how does an LED work? It's directional, how does that work? Well, it's much like a transistor where it's got a PN junction, which are doped silicon. This is getting a bit more advanced and sort of into it, but I thought I might explain this a little bit anyway. A lot of times when you're learning about electronics, they start off with the complex stuff like a transistor, a PNP or NPN, and it's got this doped silicon, which has got all these chemicals added to them to make them a certain way to affect the molecules and and the actual atom structure and electron floating around and, and holes and yeah okay there's lots of complex stuff there to worry about you don't actually need to know it that's the thing to do electronics you don't need to know how something intricately works how the chemical structure is you don't care <laughs> it doesn't matter it's irrelevant to you in most cases for doing basic hobbyist electronics or even the stuff that i'm doing doing repairs and what have you you don't need to know most of that stuff leds it's a pn junction what it is, just like a normal diode, exactly the same as a normal diode, they've got a PN junction, exactly the same. But when electrons flow across the gap between the P and the N junction, they actually emit light. Now, in a normal diode, you can't see that because the structure is done in such a way that it's basically enclosed and you can't see it. An LED is designed in a way so that the P junction is really thin and that means the light can escape and that's what you can see. That's all you need to know. So, you found it interesting? Don't forget to click like. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.